There was only ever one person who could possibly match Elvis Presley's fountain of talent, and that was Anne Margaret, sometimes called the lady version of Elvis, armed with a sultry voice that had everybody won over, even the king. But was Anne Margaret even able to attend Elvis's funeral and say a proper goodbye? What tragic accident shattered her face to pieces? And how was she separated from a soulmate, not once, but twice? I am your host, Nostalgic Nick, here with all these answers and more, including the details about the fairy tale love story Anne Margaret had with not just one man, but two. If you enjoy our deep dive, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll catch Viva Nostalgia. But without further ado, let's get to it. Where did Anne Margaret grow up? Before seducing hotel goers in Nevada, Anne Margaret was born as Anne Margaret Olsen in a part of Sweden she said was made up of, quote, lumberjacks and farmers high up near the Arctic Circle. About as far away from Vegas as you can get. As soon as the family moved stateside, Anne showed an easy affinity for dance and could repeat any steps she saw. Of course, she went on to theater and caught attention from the legendary entertainer George Burns, who recruited her for his holiday show. I, I came out to talk to you about that little girl you started to introduce. Anne Margaret? Anne Margaret. This rising star from afar got to tap dance alongside Burns from the get-go. And she more than lived up to his expectations, so much so that Variety wrote, quote, George Burns has a gold mine in Anne Margaret. She has a definite style of her own, which can easily guide her to star status. And look, no surprise here, Anne proved herself the full package, looks, dance, acting, and singing eventually producing albums with Chet Atkins and the Jordanaires. If that last one sounds a bit familiar, that's because they were Elvis's backup singers, so many connecting threads. How old was Anne Margaret when she met Elvis? Where were you in 1964? Well, Anne Margaret was filming Viva Las Vegas and Elvis Presley was getting pushed into a pool by her. The musical film was the perfect place for Anne to show off all her talent. And she won Elvis over completely and impressed him with her charisma and presence. But still, he couldn't quite figure out what made this meeting so special. He asked his bodyguard who answered, quote, She's the female you. Well, now Elvis just had to support her, right? And that he did. He sent a bouquet of flowers to every one of Anne's onstage performances, to the point she knew to expect them every show, and if none were there, something was up. Of course, like so many of Elvis's relationships, this one was also messy. Does he love me most or love my rival? It starts off more palatable than his initial courtship with a very 14-year-old Priscilla. Because at this point, Anne was around 22. But it was also one of Elvis's many affairs on the side. Not cool, especially to Priscilla. But what followed was something Anne called a very strong, intense relationship. And she talks about this romance in her own words. You have to check out her autobiography, Anne Margaret, My Story which she hastily wrote in 1994 to beat out an unauthorized book that was in the making. And looking back, Anne called Elvis her soulmate. How old was Anne Margaret when she had her accident? By 1972, Anne Margaret was a star, performing with the best of them. She wonderfully starred in The Cincinnati Kid, opposite Steve McQueen, and in Murderer's Row, opposite Dean Martin. Then she played the lead in The Swinger with Tony Franciosa. Her famous red hair was imagined by hairdresser Sidney Gilleroff, who also colored the famous flaming locks of Lucille Ball herself. And who out there remembers the CBS special The Anne Margaret Show, which hosted the likes of Bob Hope, Carol Burnett, Danny Thomas, and Jack Benny. The biggest hiccup of her career was the time her manager turned down a title role in Cat Baloo without telling her. Then her world was shattered. Lake Tahoe, Sunday, September 10th, 1972. 
She was performing on an elevated platform at the casino when she fell, plummeting 22 feet to the ground. As a general understanding, once a fall's distance goes above 10 feet, the odds of survival get very small. But against the odds, Anne Margaret survived, but she was not out of the woods. She was left with a broken arm, cheekbone, and jawbone, and she also suffered a severe concussion. Immediate reports said she needed reconstructive surgery that would take three hours. Doctors had to wire her mouth shut, and she needed a liquid diet. During her recovery, she received thousands of letters and spent recovery writing back to all of them. She got her treatment in LA, where the doctors improvised a bit. They did their surgical work from just inside the mouth instead of outside incisions and all that gross stuff. That way, her looks might be unaffected. And that improvisation worked, because not only did Anne recover, but only 10 weeks later, Anne Margaret was back on stage, performing. Heck, I am never complaining about punching in ever again. Did Anne Margaret go to Elvis Presley's funeral? Life took Elvis Presley all over the globe and into many ladies' waiting arms, much to the chagrin of Priscilla, who threw a vase at the wall when she found out about this affair. So when the tabloids went crazy about his and Anne's affair, the two parted ways, although he kept sending guitar-shaped bouquets of flowers to every single one of Anne's shows until mid-1977, when she didn't get one. And Margaret said that's when she knew, even before being told, she knew Elvis Presley had died. He never missed giving her those gifts. And sure enough, the next day she got that call from Elvis's road manager, with just two words, he's dead. She just had two words in reply, I'm coming. It caused a stir all over again when Anne Margaret showed up at the funeral. There were plenty more people there, though. The initial procession was open to fans from all over the globe who flocked to Graceland to pay their respects. Anne gave Priscilla and her daughter Lisa space at the funeral and kept her presence as understated as she could. But she was pulled aside by Elvis's father, Vernon, and the two ended up crying together. And when he was calmed down enough, Vernon quietly told Anne, quote, He was so proud of you. What was the age difference between Anne Margaret and her husband? Anne Margaret once called Elvis her soulmate, partly because they both were, quote, shy on the outside but unbridled within. But that doesn't mean she never found love again. It was the early 1960s when Anne met actor Roger Smith. She was around 20, not yet a star, and he was in his late 20s. She was also kind of new to this whole fame thing and didn't give Roger the time of day. He remembered, quote, Every other woman I met was falling over me, but this innocent, fresh-faced beauty only spoke to me when I spoke to her, and the rest of the time ignored me. I was impressed. Well, five years later, they crossed paths again, after Anne had her big career rise and apparent plateau. The two went to a nightclub for dinner, and by the third date, Anne Margaret knew she was going to marry this guy. Their wedding was at the Riviera Hotel, in a room filled with cigarette smoke and Anne crying the whole time. She was now 26 and he 34. Goes to show the ceremony isn't everything, because once they said, till death do they part in 67, they sure as hell meant it. What disease did Anne Margaret's husband have? A lot of the love between Anne Margaret and her husband, Roger Smith, was built on mutual support and giving each other strength. He was there for her when she fell over the 20 feet and shattered her face. He also made their friends carry wire cutters when they went out in case of emergencies with her wired shut jaw. And in the 1980s, Anne returned this gesture of devotion and protection. When Smith was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis, a rare autoimmune neuromuscular disease that can cause muscle weakness and difficulty swallowing and speaking. And Anne Margaret was with him through it all. In the end, complications from this disease took his life in 2017. Explaining the secret to 50 years of marriage, Anne calls it quite simply, quote, We both want it to work. 
What is Anne Margaret's net worth? Anne was once billed as the female Elvis Presley, so how does her net worth compare to the king's? Elvis's is actually a bit hard to pin down, since there are so many variables. He sold some 22 million in merchandise and got 250 grand in royalties for each album released. On the other hand, thousands of guitar-cased flower bouquets certainly cost a lot, and Elvis spent that money at the drop of a hat. At the time of his death, it's generally agreed that Elvis had a net worth of only 5 million, equal to 24 million today. As for Anne Margaret, she had some 40 films and over a dozen albums, plus whatever joint setup she and Roger Smith set up. So today, in her early 80s, Anne Margaret's net worth is estimated at 25 million. She has surpassed the king. And besides net worth, there are all those accolades that deserve a big shout out. Oh. Who can say they gained praise from actual royalty? Well, in the 80s, the king and queen of Sweden bestowed Anne with the Swedish American of the Year award. She even inspired the monarchs to travel to Minneapolis. In preparation, Anne taught her colleagues how to bow and curtsy properly. But then Anne shared, quote, well, in my excitement, I broke the rules and ran right up to the king and queen, forgetting all Swedish protocol. Their security went crazy. Well, don't worry, Anne. That is also how I greet everyone. Anne Margaret has left a huge mark on the entertainment biz. One that we haven't seen since, well, Elvis. It's a mark of just how exceptional she was to achieve all that, fall hard, and come back swinging. So now I want to know, what is all of y'all's favorite Anne Margaret movie? Do you think she and Elvis made a good couple? Get in the comments and tell me all things Anne Margaret. If you enjoyed our deep dive, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps. And subscribe to our channel so you catch all things nostalgia. From all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.